Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd and my friends at Joanne.com as we celebrate the Bernat Baby Stitch Along and this is week number one. Today's tutorial we're going to get you started on this particular pattern. You need four balls of Bernat Baby Bundle Yarn. You can pick that up at Joanne and we also need a size M or nine millimeter crochet hook today but you need to watch your gauge because the gauge is so important. So we already have a video out for how to check your gauge and how to adjust in order to make it work. This is a star so you wanna make sure the gauge is correct so that the star will continue to lay flat by the time that you get to week number three. So let's uh, get started in this pattern and we're going to be looking at the yarn. In today's uh, choice I'm using a lavender nest. So my entire tutorial will be made up of this uh, particular yarn. You can see that the colors are changing on its own. So you have the boucle, you have pip squeak, you also have Bernat blanket and you also have Chunky's yarns all worked in and they transition really abruptly and it's done through twining format. So it's not tied, it's actually twined together to have a nice seamless look as it, as it goes through. So you'll notice that it's called Lavender Nest. In all of this nest series it's not bird nest as I thought it would be but nest is an actual just a a kind of informal word for some, uh, the topes that are used within these projects. So you'll notice that the Bernat Baby Bundle by Joanne has a lot of these topes in there and that's to bring comfort as well as like kind of warmth when it comes to babies. So that's why the topes are used in there and that's referred as nest. So let's uh, begin today and let's uh, take a look at the diagram. There's also written instructions available if you'd like that as well. So this is week number one and there are five rounds for us to do only in week number one just to get us started. So it's kind of a taster really to get your feet wet and you can learn how to read diagrams at the same time as we make our way through this particular project. So you're going to be able to notice that it's really not a hard pattern in order to follow. So our goal is is to be able to have this done by the end of today's video. So you'll notice that there's uh, five rounds just like you see here. Those match the instructions of the written diagram. If you're doing a diagram format just like you see here then you want to start off with the chaining of uh, four that it starts off with and it says join with this uh, slip stitch. So if you look carefully you see that all of these stitch keys match down here on uh, what's happening. There's not a lot happening on this particular one. So you'll notice that there's a lot of chain work going on, a lot of single crochets and you see how it's branching off so then there's two double or uh, single crochets in one stitch and you'll see that there's consistency on all five sides. Think of it like a mirror. What's happening on one side section is gonna happen in the next which is happening in the next so on and so on. So within today's pattern we're going to get you started and let's uh, grab your yarn up now and I'd recommend if you're going to do this look at which ball is not starting with the pip squeak just like you see. That's harder to get started. Yeah, choose a ball that has uh, this yarn here, the, uh, the boucle or the um, Bernat Blanket or the Chunky Yarn. It's just easier for you to get started. All the rest of the tutorial doesn't matter uh, where you start on these balls but for getting right started in the center it's just easier if it's not the pip squeak. So to begin I'm using an N or 10 millimeter size crochet hook. I wanna show you that because that is my gauge in order to get it to work. So video number one which is already in this series shows you how to match the gauge that is on this particular project. If you miss that the gauge is seven single crochets in eight rows high. high. So you wanna do your test watch and make sure you match that. Please see that video if you want more information on that. So I determined because of the way that I crochet I need to increase my hook in order to get the same size gauge. So we're going to create a slip knot which will be your very first knot. Remember it never counts as anything once it's on the, on the hook and you will put it around the hook just like so. So we're going to start off and we're going to chain four. So roll that hook back so one, two, three and four and now insert this hook into the first chain like so and yarn it over, pull through and through to form the center ring. If you pull it open that's the center ring of your new afghan. So that is getting us started. Let's move on to row number one. So this is the center of your new afghan. This straggler just wrap it around and just and hold it there as you begin to do the first round and so let's move on to round number one. In round number one we just done the chain four and we slip stitched it together to form that center ring and now we're gonna immediately start into this ring. So you're going to notice that we're going to single crochet first then chain three. See how it just loops up and then single crochet then chain three and this all these single crochets there's five of them ends up going to the center of this ring. So let's begin round number one. 
So when I last left you we had the ring in our hands and here is the straggler. Wrap it around and catch it into position as you go. So we're just gonna immediately, I haven't chained one at all, I'm immediately just sticking my hook right into the center of the hole and pulling through and through. That was a single crochet. Okay, so let me show that to you one more time. We don't, we usually chain one but we don't in this particular case. So we have here, I've just done the slip stitch to join and form the ring. So just go right into the center of the hole and pull through and then pull through the two just like you see. So now we're gonna chain three. So one, two and three and coming back in again keep this straggler down around this, uh, the ring and then just single crochet into the center of that ring again. Okay and then chain three, one, two, three and then coming back into the center. Noticing I'm trapping that straggler in as I go. It just saves you from having to sew it in later and so chain three. So one, two, three coming into the center and finally we're gonna do it one last time. You should have a total of five single crochets in this. So chain three, so one, two, three and then come into the center but you're not done yet. You still have to finish it off with the chain three. So one, two, three and I want you to slip stitch it to the, the beginning single crochet that you had started with. So right now you should have a total of five of these chain three loops going all the way around. Let's move along to round number two. So in round number two what's gonna happen is that we've just done the slip stitch to join it. We're gonna chain up one, two single crochets are gonna be in the same single crochet and then follow the blue. So it's then gonna be chain three and then we're going to uh, go in and put two into the next single crochet. Chain three, follow it and just so on and you're gonna do that all the way around. Let's move along to round number two. So right where I left you we're going to chain up one first and we've joined to the, the beginning single crochet so that's exactly where I've done my join and I'm gonna put two single crochets into the same stitch. So one and two and then we're going to uh, chain three. So one, two, three and then just move along. So follow this chain three round and go to the next single crochet and single crochet two more times. So one and two. So then chain three. So one, two, three and then coming and following it around and go to the next single crochet and you're single crocheting two times. Don't forget that and then chain three. So one, two, three follow it around, go to the next single crochet and single crochet two more times. Okay, follow it around, chain three, single crochet two more times in the next one and you're doing that with the total so it has five sides because it's a five sided star and so here's where you started here. In order to get back there though make sure you chain three first and then coming back in and just join it to the first single crochet that you had started with. So go right in there and so pull and pull. It's a slip stitch. So now you have still five sides and we're ready to move on for round number three. So round number three we're gonna start up then. We're gonna chain up one and there's gonna be one single crochet in the first one and then the next single crochet there's going to be two and then you're gonna chain six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then the first one is gonna be one single crochet. The next one will have two. See these chains of six? That is consistent from uh, this uh, particular one now for through ones through five. So that's gonna be the same as we go along. The only difference is, is that rows number four and five there's going to be more breaking off so it gets wider and wider. So remember first one we're gonna chain up one, one single in the first and then two singles in the next and then chain six and then one single in the first, two in the next, chain six and so on. So let's begin round number three. So round number three we're going to start up and we're just going to chain up one and coming into the same one that where it's joining because that's where you've joined is gonna be one single crochet and the next single crochet will be two single crochets. So one and two and so now we're gonna chain six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then just coming now to the next single crochet. So just follow this along. The first single crochet is gonna be one single crochet there's a method to the madness of why these chains are like that. So the first one is one single crochet and the next one has two. Okay, so then how many do you chain? 
it's six, right? So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then just follow it around and then the first one is gonna get one single crochet and the next one is gonna get two single crochets. So what I want you to do is continue that same pattern going all the way around and you'll see that it's gonna be really looking like the pattern at this point. So continue. When you come up all the way around don't forget you still have to do this chain six and then you just slip stitch it to the first single crochet that you had started with. So that was round number three. Okay, so if you lay it down you can see all the points now the five that are gonna be happening within this. Okay, so let's move along to round number four. So in round number four we're gonna start up by chaining one and then there's gonna be one single crochet in the first one, two into the next and then one into the next, chain six and then so on. So one into the first, two into the next, one into the last one, chain six and keep on moving. This is round number four. Let's begin. So let's begin round number four. Chain up one first and then there's gonna be one single crochet in the first one and then the next one there's gonna be two single crochets into it. Okay, and then the next one there's going to be one left. Okay, so there's total of one in the first, two in the next, one into the last. Now let's chain six and jump. So one, two, three, four, five and six and now let's jump and we are going to go to the first one. So it's gonna be one single crochet in the first one and then the next one is gonna be two single crochets. So one and two and then the last one is gonna be one. So then you jump again. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six and jump. So it's one into the first one, two into the next and one into the next. And continue that same idea going all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around and I chained my six and now I'm just going to join it with the first single crochet that we had started with like this. Okay, so you'll notice that the yarn changed on its own in midway through this round which is fine to me and you can see everything is looking great. So let's move along to the final round of number five and that will conclude today's step number one in order to complete this particular baby blanket. So in round number five this is gonna be it for today's instructions and so we're gonna chain up one, one single into the first, the next one's gonna be one into the next and then the next one's gonna have two. Okay, and then the next one's gonna be one. So then chain six, first two are just one, the next one has two, the next one has one and chain six and you keep moving all the way around. Let's go for round number five. So let's begin round number five. So you're gonna chain up one first and then right where you did the join is gonna be the first one. So you're gonna go one into that one. You're gonna go one into the next. The next one has two single crochets in it. So one and two and then the next one has one. And now you're gonna do the jump. So it's gonna be a total of six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then coming into the first one. So the first two have just one single crochet into one and the next one has just one and then the next one has two. So one and two and then the next one has one. And then you do the jump again. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then jump. Okay, so the first two have one. The next one has two into the same one and the next one has one. Please do that same thing going all the way around for number five. So as you keep moving around I'm on my last side and then I chain six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and now I'm coming in to join it. Now I have to tell you I was a little confused on where I was gonna join because the reality is is that and when I was doing it as a test trial too is that you can get easily lost. So I'm just joining it with a slip stitch to finish. But what I would do if I were you and you were me I would take a piece of string, okay, a yarn and I would put it right where this is. So anytime you're confused on where you're stopping and starting it can be easily um, confused that just put a stitch marker so anytime you're up on this side of the of the star you know that you're um, coming to the conclusion and you can move that up as you go around as well. So this concludes on how to do rounds number one through five and you can see that it looks exactly like the pattern. So you had three chain sixes just like you see here and and so on all the way around. 
Welcome back to the crochet crowd as well as my friends at joanne.com. This is the Bernat baby bundle stitch along and today is week number two as we continue to make this beautiful baby blanket. Today we're going to take our rounds number one through five that we already have completed and now we're gonna go from rounds number eight all the way to 32 and we're gonna get the majority of this afghan done within today's video. So without further ado let's uh, flip to the next page and let's get started on this. Remember the more information on this video has the link in order to access this pattern if you'd like to download or save it. So the next set of instructions is step number two. It's on page three of five. There's five pages all together in this particular pattern. Again you can download that in the more information link of our video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do rounds number six all the way to 32 but do not fasten off. We just want to be able to uh, finish right there and then we're gonna continue in the next week in order to get it done. So we wanna finish off on round number 32. So let's take a look at the diagram. Do not let this scare you. This is all consistency in the way that it's growing and it's a matter of getting it started. So what I have to do at this point is that we have to establish this beginning right in round number six which is our next round and then once we get that established round number seven is, is gonna be the key point in order for you to get it to grow. You will notice that all of these are in the same position each and every time and because of that they're really easily to find. And again you see the chaining is six that it's gonna continue up that uh, we were doing in the last few rounds in the last uh, stitch or sorry last video and uh, you can see it's very easy and it's like a mirror effect. So what happens on one section will happen on another. So let's without further ado let's uh, move on to round number six. So in round number six we're gonna continue up and we're going to chain up one where we are and the first uh, three stitches are gonna be all one single crochet and then we're gonna put in a chain two and then right where this one third one is in we're gonna put another single crochet in and then the next two are gonna be a single crochet and we're gonna chain six and do the exact same as we move all the way around. So remember so we're just just look at it as like you got three single crochets on either side of the center point and the middle are stuck together and you can see in the next rounds round number seven whenever there is these uh, chain two spaces there's always one single crochet in there and that's what helps it to get that nice angle that we see within this blanket. So let's move along to round number six. So carrying up in the project I left my stitch marker right where I have it so I remember that this is the last section as it comes all the way around. So we're then going to chain up one and we're gonna single crochet into the first three. So just go one into the first one, next one, two and the next one is three. So on this third one I'll, all I want you to do is chain two and then come into that exact same stitch again in single crochet and then single crochet the next two in a row that are completely left on that side before you hit that chain six. Okay so you can see how that worked out so you have a chain two right there. So let's chain our six and continue to move around. So one, two, three, four, five and six and jump over. So the first three will all have a single crochet in them. So one, two, and three and then chain two and then go into the exact same one as the last one that you just put in there. Okay and then the last two are one single crochet each. And then you jump over again. So one, two, three, four, five and six jump over. So the first three each have one single crochet. So one, two and three it's followed by chain two and then into that same stitch again single crochet into that one plus the last two that are existing on this side. And then chain six again and continue to do that on each side. So please do that all the way around. So now coming up to the other side of the project I'm just coming around. You can see that the yarn changed over to pip squeak on me. It's great. I like this stuff. And then I chain six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then you come in and you join it. So this right where the stitch marker was was easy for me to tell that that's where I had started before. So I just join it to the first single crochet to finish off like that. So that was round number six. So let me show you round number seven which is the consistent round then all the way to number 32 and you're gonna wanna keep an eye out for that as well. So let's uh, go back to the chart. So let's begin round number seven. You're gonna chain up one and you're going to notice that there's gonna be one single crochet in each until you get to the chain two. So in each of the chain two in order to keep this consistent and you will see that it will actually create a point up at the top by you doing it long enough you won't see it right away 
but what happens is is that you're going to go into that chain two, chain two again and then back into that chain two and then continue to grab these single crochets and match them and then join it with a uh, jump over with the chain six and continue that all the way around. So let's try round number seven. So let's begin round number seven. We're gonna chain up one first and then right where we've done the join there's gonna be one single crochet. So we're just gonna move along and whatever single crochet is already there we're just gonna match it. So you don't have to really think about for counting or anything. So you have three in a row. Okay that was there. Okay and so what's happened is that you have your chain two. So you're going to put in a single crochet first, chain two and then single crochet back into that same chain two space. Okay, so then these chain twos build up on each other. So then you're gonna work down the single crochets that are already there. So there's only three of them in this particular case. So one, two, and three. And then you keep moving around. So chain and join it with our chain up six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then jump over and then start the next one. So this case, the first three. Okay, and I'm just looking for the single crochets anyway. I don't really have to count. So the first three are gonna be single crochet and now you've got the chain two. So it's gonna be single crochet in there followed by another chain two and single crochet there. Just like you see there. And now work your way down the other side. So there's one, two and three that's left for you. And keep on doing that all the way around for number seven. So I'll show it to you one more time. So chain six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and jump over go to the first one and the next one and you keep filling them in until you run them out and now the next one is the chain two right here. So it's gonna be single crochet, chain two and single crochet into the same one and then move down the other side. Just one single crochet into each and keep doing that all the way around. So chain up six and keep moving. So I'll see you here at the end of this round. So when you're coming all the way around you still have to do your chain six and you're just going to join it to where you had. So the stitch marker is indicating to me I've gone all the way around. Sometimes it's hard to tell. You just join it to the first single crochet that you had started with and then that's it. So you're going to continue then the same pattern that you just started. You can see now the points are here. You can see that their chain twos are happening now. You can still see you have the chain sixes going on and let's go back to the pattern because it's all now consistent all the way to number 32. Now all rounds now to 32 are going to be the same. The only difference is, is that these chain two spaces create an extra stitch for you to use each and every time so that it grows out equally as you can see. So you start off just the same way. So number eight so you're just gonna single crochets and then into the chain two space, chain two and then into the chain two space again and continue all the way around. So let's repeat row number eight or round number eight and then I'm gonna leave for, for you to get all the way to number 32 and then meet me next week here on the stitch along. So starting row number eight we chain up one and use your fingertips for this yarn here. It's not a big deal and you're going to just kind of match each one of the stitches as you go. So if you use your sting, uh, fingertips and with this big extra yarn it's really quite easy to operate and then all of a sudden you have to go into the chain two space. So it's the same as you know. So single, chain two and single and work your way down then the other side. So starting here. So in this case it's round number eight. There's a total of four stitches if you wanna keep count. If it makes it easier especially using this yarn that's completely up to you. So chain six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then coming back onto the other side here. So just you can feel your fingertips and see the, the points of my fingers coming through. I can feel that's the stitch. So if you're not sure just use your fingertips and feel where these stitches are. Okay as you as you go in. So some people have a hard time using this yarn but this is how people are able to look away when they do um, their crochet. You'll see people like me that can look away and talk. That's how they do it. Use your fingertips and so it's a great idea to learn how to do that. So in the chain two space it's single crochet, chain two and single crochet and then working your way down the other side. So because this is um, the pip squeak as well sometimes you can get it into the wrong area as well and it's really not a big deal because it is pip squeak. You really can't see the stitch work because it's nice and fluffy and then you keep moving around. So one, two, three, four, five 
and six. So what I want you to do now is that I want you to complete our rounds all the way to 32 for me and then we're gonna meet back up next week which will be the final week of doing this blanket. The majority of today's work will be the majority of the afghan because there's not much to do after that but the fun start uh, stuff starts as soon as you come back then on week number three. So here I am at the end of round number 32 and it took me about four hours to get from this section all the way up here. So it was just a matter of having a nice evening. So in real time I actually filmed yesterday afternoon and I worked on it in the evening yesterday and now I'm ready again this morning. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Joanne.com as we finish our Bernat Baby Bundle Stitch Along and today we're gonna do week number three which is the conclusion and this is only one particular round that we have to do in order to finish off this particular blanket. It's really great and we're almost done and today we're gonna do the conclusion. So here's the final set of instructions and the more information of this video is the link in order for you to access any of these patterns that I am using for this Bernat uh, Baby Bundle Stitch Along. So what we have here is we have in gray, we have the stitch work that is already existing and that is round number 32 and we already have that done but now we're going to do and finish off the final round to do it. But what we have to do is we have to start preparing these chain work in order to happen. So what we're going to do then is that we're going to be able to uh, make our chains and right now we have all these loose chains on the end but now we're gonna be able to put it together and we have to do it a total of five times. So we have to do that first before we continue to do the final round. So let's show you how to do that first. So let's begin doing the twisting in order to get this chain work to go. So now we're gonna create our step laddering effect. So you're gonna go back down to round number one of the middle of it and you have to do this five times. So you're gonna have to do all five levels. So you just pick up the first chain three that is existing on round number one and you're going to twist it. Okay, so you want to twist it so that this string on this side goes over. So you have a complete turn like this. Okay, so let's just look at it again. So pick this up. Okay, and pick it up and turn it. Okay, so turn it. So now you're all you're gonna do is now pick up the next chain that's available to you in behind and feed it through that loop. So now it's just a matter of feeding these chains through loops. So it's gonna be really tight in the very beginning because if you remember it was only chaining three. So now you grab the next one and feed it through that loop. Okay, so this is kind of manual work as you can see here and you're gonna feed it through and you're gonna pull things together. So this what you see here is going to collapse on itself. So you're gonna move then to the next one and feed it through. And all you're just gonna do is kind of yank up on it. It will pull it nice and tight. Don't skip any that you do. And now you can see all those beautiful colors and, and textures that you've been working with are all gonna come through on the chain. When you get all the way to the top, you're just going to feed the last ones through, including the last one that you've been working on. This is where I'm just gonna put my hook back in so it doesn't drop it and you're going to put that last one through. So now with the spare piece of string, what I would recommend, you can either use a safety pin if you have it or you can use just a spare piece of string in order for you to, to kind of tie it and hold it into position. So just tie it around two of these and then when you come back to this when you're ready, you can just adjust. So this prevents this from all falling out. So I'm just gonna tie it a nice little bow tie. Nothing tight, it's just a holder and you can use a safety pin too if you want to, if you have access to that. So now you're just gonna move around and you're gonna go to the next one that is existing. So rot rotate your afghan or your blanket and then just start down at the bottom again and just start right down in row number one and remember you want to twist it. So give it a twist, same direction as before and then start moving up. So right in the very beginning it's really tight and you need that because it is the center and then once you get beyond the first few then it gets looser for you to be able to work with. Just like that. So you're gonna work all the way up then and do the remaining of these. Make sure you put in your safety pins or your piece of string in order to hold it and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue then and we're gonna move around and secure everything into place with the final round that concludes today's blanket. Just as a side tip, as I've been coming up and I've been getting all the chains in, I turned it around and I have a loop that's outside of here. So what this means to me is that I accidentally skipped that loop as I was trying to go through. So what you're gonna have to do is that you're gonna have to just untang or un 
take this out and probably check that before you secure everything in a position and just undo. So just pull it apart until you get to that section. So you can just pull it straight out like this until you get to where that loop is holding out. So it looks like I just skipped it and it was right there. So now I'm gonna turn it back around and then coming in and pulling it up. So just turn it around and make sure that you captured all the loops. I actually missed it on another section and I just saw that I saw it here as well but I corrected that one there and this one I hadn't yet seen until this very moment. So I'm making sure I'm getting everything through so it looks still it looks good on this other side um, but I'm checking the back and there's no loops outstanding on the back. So make sure you check that. So here is the look of the middle here. I've done all the ladder work but I have not gone around to secure it all into final position. So you see it's nice and tight. It pulled everything together. You can see the star formation is now happening. So now I'm gonna take you back to the pattern. We're going to go through the last uh, section of this. This is just one more round in order to conclude today's blanket. So here is the pattern and we're gonna do one more round. You can see we're gonna do some pico work but you're also going to secure that final loop that's gonna go around. Here's the thing. Look where that slip stitch is. It's on the wrong side isn't it? So what you have to do and, and it's not on the wrong side uh, by accident. It's on the wrong side on purpose. So when we went to go finish this particular one we, start, we stopped and we're on this side of the project. So here is the ladder right here. So what we're going to do is that we're going to turn our project around backwards and we're going to then start and we're gonna go up over this first and then across. Okay, so it's not a mistake in a pattern. It's just the way that you're going to do it in order to do the final pass all the way around. So to do the final pass we're going to go some single crochet. So we're gonna turn this final loop just like the way you see it here and then we're going to single crochet and then pico and then uh, single crochet continue to lock it and then you're going to notice is that we are going to put the next three single crochets by itself. We're going to do a pico, three crochets by itself and then a pico and we're gonna continue that all the way to the end just like you see here. So right where we did those chain twos we're going to do a single crochet pico, single crochet pico, single crochet pico all within that space and then we're going to continue again three single crochets, pico, three single crochets and so on. And then once you get back over here it's just like what you did here. Three single crochets, a single crochet pico and three single crochets and that locks that into position when you go to do that. So let's uh, uh, start experiencing this round. So let's turn our project upside down. Okay, so we're, where we were. So we're look, now looking at the wrong side of the project. So you, none of the ladders should be available and, and visible to you. You should only see the back. And so this is uh, just a yarn strand as it changed over. Just for uh, complete disclosure, I am almost done a third ball of yarn. I'm gonna be moving on to a fourth just so you know. So what we want to do is that we want to start off right where we are right now and you have to get that final loop that's going in there. Okay, and so here it is here and I can tell it's also the same color as that is what is attached as well. So what you wanna do is that you wanna twist it just like it shows in the photograph. So just twist. Okay, did you see that? So look where my hook is and I'm coming around. And what we're going to do then is that you're going to single crochet right into that, that same loop. Okay, so it might get really difficult the first time. So let's just try it again. So just make sure this yarn is behind first. So turn it and go right into that loop and I want you to single crochet three times. So one, two and three and then you're going to do a pico. So it's really hard to see on this yarn. So the first stitch is gonna be one single crochet first and then a pico. So it's one, two, three and then coming down into the first chain you want to insert it into the first chain. So just insert right into that first chain and pull through and through and that's your pico. pico. So I've just done a single crochet and now I'm gonna chain up three. So one, two and three and now you're gonna come down and you're gonna go into the very first section. See these two strands of string? See how they're kind of doing an arrow? You're just gonna sneak in behind those. So you don't go all the way through the project. You just go through those two and pull through and through and that's a pico. So let me show you again. So let's just continue along. So one, and this is just a pico demonstration but I'm just demonstrating it later on in this project because I'm not on this yarn at this moment. Okay so here we go. So you got three in. So remember it's one, two and three and then see these two strands. They form like an arrow. Just sneak in behind them and pull in and in. And even though you cannot physically see that when you're on this other kind of fuzzy yarn you can actually feel it. 
and so you'll be able to sneak it in and it will create these little bumps that are on the outsides just like you see. So that's how you do a pico. So now in that same loop you want to single crochet three more times. So one, two, and three. So this is now gonna hold this loop for you so that you never have to worry about it. So just manipulating it here you want to move down to the first stitches here. So you're going to then single crochet for the th first three. So one and you got two and three and then a pico. So one, two, three, go into the first chain, pull through and through. That's your pico and now continue then in the next three. So one, two and three and then pico. So one, two, three, going into the first one. You can see the yarn just changed. So pull through and through and now pico then for the next three. And you continue that all the way across. So one, two, and three and then pico. So one, two, three, first chain, pull through and through and then continue along. So one and two and three. So I want you to continue that all the way across and I'll see you at the first section where it is the chain two right up here and then I'll show you what to do there. So I'm coming up near to the point and you're gonna notice that there's a pico. So one, two, three and then coming back in first one and then there's gonna be two stitches left over here before you get to the to the chain two space that you've been working with. Okay, and you'll see that in the instructions as well. If you're off by one, I wouldn't worry about it. Just, you know, make it or fake it, right? So I wouldn't frog anything in order if you're not got it right. So now you're just gonna single crochet into the chain two space and then pico. So one, two, three and then pico. And then single crochet again into that same space and then pico. So one, two, three. and then single crochet finally again into that, that same space and then pico. So one, two, and three and then pico. And pico that in. So first one. Remember there's other videos on how to do picos as well on the crochet crowd. So now you're just gonna continue then and just start going down along the side. So the first three are single crochets. So one, two, and three and then pico. So one, two, three and then pico it and then continue to do that same fashion going all the way around. So what I'll do is I'll get there and then I'll just review on how to do these edges again where the ladders are, are on attached and then I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming up now and I'm on the underside of the ladder here. You can see that here and I wanna grab the very last strand. Make sure that you check it and make sure that there's no strands that are misleading here that are not um, in the particular um, ladder. So now you're going to turn this work here. So just straight out and just turn it. Okay, give it a, a twist and then you're going to go right into there. You'll have to hold things in a position and you wanna single crochet three times. So one, two, and three. And now you're going to single crochet one more time. So this is the fourth and then pico. So one, two, three and then coming in to the beginning to do your pico and then coming down again on the other side. So one, two, and three. So once you got that done then you're just going to then jump down and continue. So remember it's three in a row. So one, two, and the yarn's changing for me here. Three, and then your pico. So one, two, three, and then coming into the same one. Okay, so it's one, two, and three and then pico. Just like that. Okay, so continue that all the way around. So I'm coming up to the end of the project here. I'm coming to the final round and I'm just putting everything in the last few stitches in and I'm just going to slip stitch to the beginning 
where I had started with. So now everything is in. The ladders are all in. I can go back and now I can trim out my extra yarns that I had in there that I buried as I went. And so it's really just the final touches. I'm going to show you how to be able to um, hide in these loose ends as you go. It is thick yarn. So you'll need a darning needle and I'll show you what to do next. So you're gonna need a darning needle for this and then I just want you to pull this yarn. So make sure you cut it first and then just pull this yarn through the final loop. Okay and pull it snug. So now you can just take this yarn here. This is the boucle and you can just squish it down and then feed it through the eye of the needle. It's amazing how much you can squish that if, when you have to. And so just feed it through. So if you go in the direction from which you just came. So just go back through once. Okay and pull it through. Boucle is a little tougher to pull through than other yarns. So one. So make sure you don't pull it to the point where it's ruining the tension. And then go back in the other direction for two. Okay and then go back in the other direction for three. So any loose ends that you may have that you can secure it this way. And now you can safely just cut this right down into the project. And you will never see where you stopped and started on this project unless you're following the yarn around. So now your blanket is completely done and now it's time for you to submit a photo in order for the giveaway if you're participating in the stitch along. So this is the conclusion for the Bernat Baby Bundle Stitch Along and this is an amazing idea. You've learned how to make the center. You've learned how to do the Jacob's Ladder or the step laddering effect as you see. You've learned how to make a star. You've learned how to do picots and now it's time for you to participate with our giveaway. And if you're participating in this and you're in the time frame that this video is being uh, <laughs> broadcast, you have until March, uh, May 4th of 2017 to submit me a photo. You can see the link for the more information on this video if you would like to participate. So make sure you snap a photo of your afghan done and then send it to me and then we can get you into the giveaway. So on behalf of joanne.com I'm your host Mikey. On behalf of the crochet crowd it's been a pleasure to stitch along with you and we'll see you again in the fall of 2017 as we stitch along again with our friends over at Joanne. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.